we have talked about before and at length just if you were Rishi Sunak in all honesty you should have never ever ever have brought back David Cameron now the question is why did Rishi Sunak bring back David Cameron well after his you know little reshuffle of getting rid of Suella Braverman he then decides that well I cannot trust my own party. I cannot trust a single person on my backbenchers to not stab me in the back, to not undermine me, to not bring me down. I need to go outside of the party to find someone who I can at least trust, you know, not to stab me in the back or throw me under the bus at the first possible opportunity. And the rumours all were that he went to William Hague, first of all. William Hague turned down the offer to be Home Secretary, apparently from what we, rumours of what we've heard. But then, of course, he goes, or at least we, we might have known that William Hague might have recommended to him David Cameron. And David Cameron has said publicly in the past he would go back to being an MP, but he wanted to be the Foreign Office. He wanted to be there. That was his, like, top job. The one job that would bring him back into the game. And so, you take James Cleverly, who, well, let's face it, while not the most competent guy being in the Foreign Office, Having continuity in the Foreign Office, pretty important. So instead you take James Cleverly, a job that he is enjoying, although, of course, not doing that well at, moves into the, to the Home Office. A job that he does not enjoy and does not want. Bravo move there by Rishi Sunak. <laughs> and then, of course, in you bring David Cameron. But as we've said before, there he brings big, big baggage with him. And it is this baggage that will be something that takes down David Cameron. You know, he's he's moving in to, you know, the ministerial offices and he's bringing these massive wardrobes. And the thing is, in these wardrobes, well, there's a couple of skeletons. And we're going to talk about some of those skeletons very quickly. Uh, but most importantly, the one we're going to talk about today as we've talked about, you know, Greensill and, of course, David Cameron's ABCs. More importantly today, we're going to talk about the C, the China question, because a video has emerged quite recently, and um, let's just say this. <laughs> the shadow foreign secretary for Labour is going to have a field day, and uh, they're going to be, of course, many conservatives that are going to be absolutely fuming about this. So before we do get into this, please do remember to click on the like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page and one off the link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel. And of course, down below there is the uh, Pony Club and of course the YouTube thank you button as well. So as always, let's crack on with this. So the baggage that David Cameron brings with him. You might all remember we've talked about the Greensill saga very recently, one of the UK's biggest lobbying scandals in history that kicked off right at the beginning of 2020, that David Cameron was using his previous position to gain access to Conservative MPs, and now there's fresh allegations that, well, he may have, you know use some of the gifts as a tax write-off rather than declaring them properly because then you would have to have paid tax on them. Again, naughty boy David Cameron. And I highly, highly suspect that that case is not over because there is an ongoing case in Switzerland which could maybe Cameron could get dragged into. There's still questions and a case going on here in the UK. <laughs> But as we said and said before, the court system in the UK is 
incredibly bad at the moment, not only just because of COVID, because of austerity, um, which brings us on nicely to the A of the ABCs, of course, austerity. Having the architect of austerity at your side during the next general election, yeah, not going to be good. Not going to play well in the North. This is why I said just a couple of days ago, the Northern Research Group of those Red Wall Tory MPs are having absolutely spasms of anger um, and frustration and in an absolute panic because they wanted to be more than one-term Tory MPs. And there is nothing worse in the world than just being a one-term MP. It's not very good on your resume, and everyone hates a loser. And many of these guys in those red wall positions had big ambitions. They were saying, oh, we're not your typical Tory after all. We're, you know, I'm wearing denim jeans, not, you know, cords and tweed. But that was their whole shtick and selling point. And as we said before, without Boris Johnson, without levelling up, without Brexit, that whole concoction that won the Tories, the Red Wall, in 2019, they don't win it. They don't win it at all. And a lot of them are about to lose their jobs, and they ain't happy. This comes on, of course, to the B question, Brexit. Of course, a lot of the you know pro-Brexit uh, MPs at the backbenchers, not very happy. You've just brought the leader of the Remain campaign, someone who has actively, even since 2016, spoken about how bad Brexit was or how bad Brexit has been going, and then you've put him into the Foreign Office, to which Brexit is primarily one of the big concerns of the Foreign Office. It is a foreign policy issue, and now you've put him in charge. They've already been screaming for quite some time, Brexit betrayal, Brexit betrayal, Brexit betrayal. And that wasn't at Rishi, and that was at Rishi Sunak. You've now got David Cameron. Um, so that could prove very interesting on any possible Brexit developments. We'll have to see what happens there. And then, of course, round to see the China question. And this is what uh, has now been emerging just recently. There is a video of David Cameron, and I think he's uh, in India, that he's talking about a port development at Sri Lanka. And literally, word for word, Cameron repeats a, or at least cites, actually, no, he doesn't cite, he, re, he re, pretty much regurgitates the entire arguments and talking points of a Chinese study to create this port in Sri Lanka, which is part, of course, of China's Belt and Road Initiatives. And the policy group that funded that report is, of course, paid for by the Chinese government. So there are now serious questions of, you've got Cameron going into one of the biggest offices in the UK, and you have to ask the question, is David Cameron compromised? Has he been, has he been working with Chinese authorities, because as we pointed out last time we talked about the ABCs, China, um, so Cameron was very, very naive when it came to uh, talking about China. He's very much one of these MPs who just thinks, look, um, or at least one of these conservatives who think we can just put China back in its box. It's fine. You know, you know, ruffle Xi Jinping, you know, on his head, say, oh, what a, what a, what a cute boy he is, and then just, you know, put him back in his box as well, and then that's it, you can just continue to ignore China, um, <laughs> and then the other big question is, and, and this raises, of course, now that this video has come out, and I think we mentioned this before, Cameron has to go through a security check to sort of confirm his office for foreign secretary, if he fails, if he fails that job and Rishi Sunak forces it through, then not only has he completely disregarded any security for one of the highest officers in the land, but if anything comes out about Cameron leaking secrets or anything like that, uh, not only is Cameron done, Rishi's done as well. Um, 
There's other questions then arise because Cameron has had a lot of uh, lobbying in the past couple of years. Is he still going to be, you know, maybe sneaking some of these people in? It wouldn't be beyond him. Like I say, um, this is, you know, a bit of bribery and corruption. It's in the Tory blood. Might he, shall we say, oh, by the way, he is so-and-so from this company. Or, hey, he is so-and-so from this company. And they both just happen to be from China. Um, yeah, <laughs> as we said at the beginning, why on earth, why on earth would you bring back David Cameron? Out of all the moves Rishi Sunak could have pulled, bringing back David Cameron was the worst idea you could have pulled. But say Rishi's desperate the Tories are getting even more desperate there's a general election right around the corner a lot of people are now saying we're in for like a spring maybe summer potential election halfway through the year and all I can say is let's count down the days until that happens so as always thank you very much for watching and of course as always we'll see you all next time